Every day we engage in hundreds of different activities. We go to work, pursue our hobbies, meet friends or stay at home and read a book. We eat, drink and take showers. We may work out, play an instrument or enjoy painting. But what is the reason behind all these activities? Why don't we just stay in bed and not move an inch? The secret lies in a particular system of the brain, the reward system. Thanks to the reward system we are motivated to do things, mostly those that are good for us and have proven to make us happy. The reward system is so crucial that rats that had their reward system destroyed dehydrate and starve because they don't even have the motivation to eat or drink. This video will explain how the reward system works and help you understand why we do what we do, why we are motivated for some things but not for others and how we learn and predict what will make us happy. The reward system consists of several brain regions and pathways between them. To understand the basics, we now have to have a closer look at its most important pathway. It starts in the ventral tegmental area, VTA, and leads to the nucleus accumbens in the striatum, where the endings of the neurons release the neurotransmitter dopamine that stimulates neurons in the nucleus accumbens and activates it. Whenever the VTA receives a signal indicating an upcoming reward, something we would like and enjoy, it starts sending more dopamine to the nucleus accumbens to stimulate it. This stimulation translates into a feeling of wanting to do something to get that reward. For example, let's say we are at work trying to focus on the screen and then an email comes in from a colleague saying, it's my birthday today, so I placed some cake in the kitchen. Your brain starts sending signals to the VTA informing it about the cake. The VTA recognizes from previous experiences Cake, that's something we like, that is rewarding. It then sends dopamine signals to the nucleus accumbens, creating a strong urge and motivation to go to the kitchen and get a piece of that cake. In psychology, this urge, the feeling of needing to do something, is described as wanting, while the feeling of enjoying something we like is liking, the pleasurable sensation of, oh, I like this cake, it tastes so nice. In terms of understanding the reward system, this pleasure is the reward we're trying to achieve through our actions. But how does the VTA know which actions will actually lead to a reward? The answer is, it doesn't know, it predicts. However, after years and years of life experience, it has learned to be very good at prediction. From experience, it has learned that biting into a cake will be yummy and give us a good feeling, while biting into an onion will not. Many of you may have heard of the famous experiment by Pavlov, who rang a bell every time he was about to give a dog food. After a while, the dog began to salivate when hearing the bell, because it had learned that the bell signaled that food was about to come. The neutral stimulus, the bell, became conditioned to the food, and thus becoming a conditioned stimulus. Similar things happen in terms of reward prediction, and some researchers developed a model to explain this on a cellular basis in the VTA. The VTA receives information from different brain regions that inform about different stimuli. Those can be something we hear, something we see, but also some spontaneous thoughts such as suddenly thinking of a bar of chocolate. Those stimuli itself activate the VTA, but not enough to make a reward prediction activation of the pathway. But the VTA actually does not only fire with reward prediction, but also with unexpected reward. Let's say something tastes a lot better than expected. Maybe a foreign dish we haven't tried before and that didn't look that appealing to us. Because we do not know yet how good it will taste, the stimulus of seeing that food will not be strong enough to activate the VTA alone. Makes sense as we're not expecting a reward. But when we surprisingly like it a lot, the VTA will be activated by that. Understand the correlation to the stimulus of seeing that food and will through a mechanism that activates the genes of the neuron to build more receptors, make sure that the stimulus of seeing the dish will be strong enough to activate the VTA next time. We have learned what makes us happy and what we should be motivated for. So next time our friend friends brings us the same food again, we will immediately feel the wish to eat it. But what if it's the other way round? We expect a reward, but it turns out to be smaller than expected or not be there at all. Can we unlearn our expectations again? Yes, we can. We know already that dopamine levels in the nucleus accumbens sent from the neurons coming from the VTA rise when we expect a reward. 
but when we don't get the expected reward, dopamine levels will fall and will end up being under the level of where they initially were. After that happens several times, our brain has learned that we no longer can expect a reward after a certain stimulus, and consequently this stimulus is not going to make your dopamine levels increase anymore. So this is why researchers call it the reward prediction error. If the reward is better than expected, dopamine release will rise, but if it's not as good as expected, it will fall. This reward prediction error will make sure that we learn what leads to a reward and what does not. So let's look at it once again with the example of the foreign dish. The first time we see the dish we have no expectations, so we have no dopamine release when seeing it. However, when we surprisingly like it a lot, so it is better than expected, we will have a big dopamine release when eating it. Next time we see the dish we do expect a reward and get a dopamine release already by seeing it. However, there will not be a release when eating it because it will taste just as good as expected. Let's say one day our friend changes the ingredients, adds a spice we don't like that much. We expect the reward when seeing the dish, as usual, but when it doesn't taste as good as expected, dopamine release will fall as soon as we realize the change of taste. Now you understood the basics. In my second video about the reward system, I will explain more about different kinds of dopamine release and how the pathway can be more or less active. You can also check out my other videos about the reward system where I explain how it gets impacted by stress, caffeine or mental disorders. And as I will constantly work on new videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.